Hey everyone, I am coming here today to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, which is taking time off and traveling and taking more vacations. I do a lot of market research when it comes to private practice building, and it seems like one of the most pronounced and important things that always gets brought up in terms of what do you want out of private practice ownership is more travel time, more freedom, more flexibility, the ability to be in movement, to go on more retreats, to go to more trainings around the world. And it just seems like a theme that's really important to us, something that a lot of private practice therapists really value. So I wanna talk about time off. I know that we have an interesting relationship with it. At first, during my course, during the first week, I asked to, I asked everyone to say, how much do you make right now? How much time off do you get? What would you like to be making? And how much time off would you like to have? And the answers almost feel shameful. Most clinicians kind of look down at their feet like when they say, I don't know, it'd be nice to get two or three weeks off. That's what I get now. And that includes my sick time. And I am kind of cringe. I'm like, oh man, you know, you should be at least thinking about seven to eight weeks and you deserve to be thinking about seven to eight weeks. And I want you to pay attention to how you feel in your body or what kind of feeling or sensation comes over you when I say you should take eight weeks off minimum a year. Do you feel like you don't deserve it? Like you can't afford to? Like your clients would be lost without you? Those are really common feelings and I just wanna help you combat them because you'll do your best work when you're able to look forward to going away, taking a break, taking, taking a step off the gas. You know, it's just important. We can't do this type of work all the time it really burns us out. And for those of you who really value freedom and flexibility and time, I mean, there's no better way to do so than to own your own business. So I take 12 weeks off a year. And, and for most of you, you're probably like, what, how the hell do you do that? I started taking a week off since March, since COVID started. And, you know, at first I was like, wow, that's, that's a lot of money to be losing. My clients are going to really need me and they're gonna struggle with this, but I was already taking a significant amount of time off anyway, at least eight to 10 weeks a year. Um, so what I like to do is I like to really have that conversation about taking time off in my informed consent during our initial, initial phone consultation. I like to talk about the fact that I do travel often. Is it okay with you that you'll have a therapist who might be out of town uh, one week out of every month? And it, you know, most people are like, yeah, that's fine. And if they're not, if they really need, like, I really need weekly sessions or multiple times a week, I just refer to them to someone who has that availability. But I know at first it's scary and it feels like we have to take everyone and see everyone and work 40 hours a week. And I just, you know, really want you to think about why you're getting into private practice. And I would imagine it's for a lifestyle change. It's not to get rich. Like, yes, you will make more money than you're making at your community mental health agency. Absolutely. That's, that's without question. But the fact of the matter is you're going into private practice probably because you value time, time with your family, your friends, with yourself, with your pets, freedom, your freedom to make decisions, to approve your own PTO requests, to not have to ask the boss if you can take uh, two weeks off at the end of December. You know, these are the things that you're going into private practice for. And a lot of therapists really struggle with the concept of taking time for themselves. I know we preach self-care all the time, but I know we also struggle to do it and implement it and actually incorporate it into our lifestyles. So I just want you to think about that. And here's the thing, when you're able to be at your best optimal version of yourself, I imagine it's not by working back to back to back to back clients all the time. You just don't have the capacity for it. Even if you think you do right now, I promise you it will burn you out. It'll make you hate doing the work that you do. And that's, that's not okay because you're a vessel of change and you really matter in the relationship. So time off is critical. And I'm not saying like you have to go travel the world like I do, like, I know a lot of people would love to do that and there's a lot of reasons why that can't happen, but there's gotta be a way to step away from your practice, to take more time off, to build in at least eight weeks of vacation time and to really start to come to terms with that abundance mindset of, I'm gonna take more time off 
and I know that's gonna create more influx of revenue for me because I'm gonna be able to be more creative. I'm gonna be able to be more present. I'm going to be able to feel confident in myself to raise my rates because I know the clients that I'm working with really value what I have to offer. So I really encourage that, it's really important. And you know, there's a lot of ways you can structure this and I'm gonna do a video talking about how to prepare your clients and how to have plans in place so that you can do so. But in the meantime, I want you to think about what does my ideal lifestyle look like? How many weeks off a year does that include? Do I want to go on more vacations? Are we trying to start a family and planning for that so that I can have three or four months off with my child? Are we working on getting a new pet where we're gonna to have to acclimate them to our household? Do I just want more time off just to do trainings and go to retreats and do continuing ed work? Whatever the answer is, I imagine you want more than two to three weeks off a year. Two to three weeks off is nothing. I want you to plan for eight to 10. And here's how you can budget doing the math. So when people ask about rate setting and how much should I be charging, how many clients should I be seeing, you're missing the point. You're, you know, you're focusing on all the numbers and all the kind of like the, the stuff that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter if you don't know how much money you need to make a year. So what I would be doing is like, how much money do I need to make to pay my bills and to be secure? Or how much money do I need to make to feel comfortable in life? Use that number to determine your rates. So if you wanna take 10 weeks off a year, you're essentially using the number, right? Like say, let's use $100,000. How can I make $100,000 in 42 weeks instead of 52 weeks, right? And how many hours of work do I need to put in to do that? And we can also you know, calculate all of our expenses with that number. But that's what I would um, encourage you to do. Take $100,000 as the number, take 10 weeks off, so that leaves you 42 weeks to make $100,000. That should tell you how many clients you need to see a week at what number and at what cost. That allows you to kind of budget appropriately to take that time off. That's how we start building in PTO into <clears throat> small business ownership. We need to have a plan. We can't just assume that we're gonna do this week to week and live frantically or, or without you know, any caution to the wind. So really having a plan. If you wanna work 42 weeks a year and you need to make a certain amount of money, that allows us to do the math to say, I need to see this many clients at this rate. That allows us to rate set. That allows us to have a better understanding about how we're moving forward. And that's really important so that we have some clarity and direction and a plan to, to kind of help us structure that. So we can do that. We can certainly start to have a better understanding of what your full fee needs to be or what you should be aiming for. We can start thinking about how many clients you need to see a week in order to make that happen. So then we start putting money towards vacation. We start putting money towards sick time, training time. We start putting money towards our IRAs, our 401ks, our retirement plans. All of that stuff should be built into your budget. And I have a private practice calculator that I'm willing to share with you so that you can make your own budget and get a better understanding of how much money you need to make and how much expense is gonna come out in order to do so. Because the more money you make, the more taxes you're gonna pay. It's just the reality of, of, uh, of life. So I just want to encourage you to really be focusing on this. Having some clear understanding of your ideal vision for your practice, for your vacation time. Really, really kind of trying to hold yourself accountable to having eight to 10 weeks off a year so that you can travel, you can spend more time, you don't feel rushed, you get to recharge at least one week out of every month almost and come back to work, like really being your best version of yourself. Your clients will thank you, your family will thank you, you will thank yourself and you deserve to do it. You've worked really freaking hard to get to this place. So I just wanna encourage you to do so. I hope this was helpful and feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Feel free to uh, take a look at my newsletter for a free private practice building guide, more tips on travel, more retreat building tips, more private practice building tips, etc. Have a great day.